That's what we're focusing on. Okay, the inventory management systems. How many systems can we have? There are two systems. The first one, perpetual, and in the second, periodic. Those are the two inventory management systems that you can make use of. The first thing that we need to do is we need to understand what does that system actually do and when is it used. Okay, so perpetual, the word perpetual means continuous. Continuous meaning all the time. So if I'm managing inventory, I'm going to be managing inventory, controlling it, monitoring it all the time. Okay, that's perpetual. Perpetual means all the time. Right, so businesses that keep track of their stock all the time, the best example I can give you is a car dealership. Car dealerships look at managing inventory all the time. Right, so if a new car comes in, you need to register it in terms of the accounting records to make sure that you've accounted for a new vehicle. Okay? If a vehicle is sold, will you know it's been sold? Yes. Okay, you have to keep track of inventory all the time. Right, if somebody comes in and steals one of our vehicles, will we know about it? Yes. Okay, immediately you need to pick up on those things. Okay, you need to know where all your stock is all the time. Right, so when does this apply? Right, in gen uh, well, generally speaking, okay, higher value items with lower quantities. Right, so I'm not going to be selling huge quantities or large amounts of stock. I'm going to be selling less stock, but the, those items are more expensive. Okay, like technology, okay, computers, laptops, TVs, appliances, that type of thing. Okay, you'd want to keep track of those items all the time. Because if you lose something, it's going to affect the business quite a lot. Okay, right, that's perpetual. With periodic, the word periodic refers to periodically. And if something is done periodically, it's not done all the time. Okay, so in other words, sometimes. Sometimes we're going to manage, control, and monitor our stock. Right, so with this one, you're basically looking at a stock take. Okay, you're not going to count your stock all the time because it's too time consuming, it's too difficult, or it could be impossible to do depending on how big the business is. Right, so the best example I can give you here is a large wholesaler or a retailer. Good, wholesalers and retailers, you see them all around, hey? Okay, so if you're looking at a wholesaler and a retailer, these wholesalers and retailers have huge amounts of stock. But the items that they sell are generally lower in terms of value. Okay, yes, they might sell some items that are more valuable, and then those items you'll manage better, okay, and you'll control those items, okay, very well, because they're valuable. But if we're just looking at things like everyday groceries, household goods, okay, uh, food, okay, that type of thing, consumer goods, then those consumer goods are generally lower value items with higher quantities. Okay, so if you think about the malls, right, think about when last you were in the mall. All right, those malls have many different shops. Okay, a jewelry shop. Would a jewelry shop be using perpetual periodic? Think about it. Jewelry. Perpetual, because jewelry is expensive. Right, would you need to know how many rings and necklaces and bangles and all sorts of things you've got in the jewelry store? Yes. And would you know that all the time? Yes. Okay, because one ring could be a diamond ring and it could be worth 100000 Okay. All right, so when looking at jewelry, 
right? It's a high value item and the quantities are a bit lower. Okay, jewelry stores aren't as big as grocery stores. Okay, just go around and look at the malls, you'll see. Right, those, those stores are smaller, or even appliance stores. Stores that sell appliances versus stores that sell common everyday items that you buy. Food, consumer goods, that type of thing. Okay, groceries. Right, so when you look at perpetual and periodic, you need to differentiate between the two, and you need to understand what the differences are. Then we need to apply the accounting. So, for both systems, what's the first step? Do you buy or do you sell? Which comes first? Buying or selling? Yes, buying stock or buying inventory. Okay, so you're going to have buying inventory for both. Buying inventory for the perpetual system and buying inventory for the periodic system. But now we need to look at the debit and credits. Okay, so a bit of revision. Right, you might have, or you, you maybe you remember some of it, but I'm going to cover it and then you can decide on how much of this you remember and how much of it you don't. Okay, if I'm buying inventory and I'm using the perpetual system, what is inventory called when looking at perpetual? Is it inventory or is it perpetual? purchases it's inventory okay so if you buy inventory you debit the inventory asset increase you credit the bank if you're using cash to pay for it or creditors if you're buying goods on credit either the asset is decreasing if you're going to be affecting the bank or your liability is going to be increasing if you're going to be buying on credit. Okay, remember, buying on credit is just another form of payment, okay, or, or a, another form of transaction. Okay, we're not paying, we're going to pay later, right, but we're purchasing. Right, VAT could come up. Remember, VAT is something that is always considered, okay, value added tax. So, when I buy inventory, input output, picture the diagram. Input, okay, goods are coming in, so input that. Input that is an asset, it would be increasing. Makes sense. Okay, so this is what you would record if you're using the perpetual system. Would that apply to a periodic system? Yes, the only thing that's different is the vocabulary. Instead of using inventory, you use purchases. And purchases is seen as an expense that's increasing. Right, so you're debiting your inventory or you're debiting your purchases. Right, that's what you're going to be looking at when you're looking at either perpetual or periodic. It's, it's either or. Okay, it's, it's either inventory or it's purchases. It depends on what system you're using to manage your stock. Okay, because all businesses need to manage stock. Stock is the um, uh, the goods, okay, the merchandise, right? The stock that you have on hand that's going to be held for resale, right? Or it could be part of production, okay? So raw material would be also considered inventory, okay? We spoke about that, All right? What happens after you've bought? What can happen next? Do you sell? Are you always happy with the goods that you buy? Not always. Okay, so sometimes businesses can return some of the goods that they buy. Does that make sense? Okay, so when that happens, you have a return. Returning inventory or stock. Let's use that rather. Okay, so if you're going to be returning stock, would that apply to both? Yes. Okay, you, you can return goods using either or. So now, if I'm considering periodic, okay, with periodic, the returns, okay, will be recorded because the source document needs to exist to show that you've given goods back to the company, right? So 
the goods are going to go back a certain amount of goods okay you're not going to keep track of all the goods you're just taking back some of the goods right so remember even though you count stock you're counting stock but you're counting stock at the end of the period okay when you're actually calculating a cost of sale okay but we'll look at that all right so perpetual what is that continuous keeping track of stock all the time this is the buying so when you look at the returns you're going to have the complete opposite if there's a return you'll debit the bank increase the bank or decrease the liability do you see that okay and then you will decrease the input VAT, credit the input VAT, okay, and credit the inventory. Right, so that's what you're looking at in terms of the reversal. Okay, it's basically the opposite. Right, you're reversing what took place initially. Okay, some textbooks talk about processing output VAT, okay, instead of reversing out input VAT. It doesn't matter. Okay, the net effect is still the same. Okay, so obviously we're going to be focusing on what your textbook gives you, all right, as their method of accounting for the return. Okay, all right, the net effect is the same. Whether you are reducing input VAT or processing output VAT, the net effect is identical. Okay, all right, would that apply to the periodic system? Yes, the only thing different is the vocabulary. All right, so the same thing we had here, we'll have it again, except... This word inventory becomes purchases. Right, and that's not an asset, it's considered an expense, and it's a purchase return actually. Okay, you need to identify the return separate from the purchases. Expense, uh, not expense, income increase. Okay, so purchases is an expense, the opposite of an expense is income. That's the new vocabulary. Right, that's what you would record in the books of the business for the periodic inventory management system okay there's one more now we can look at the selling okay so once you buy goods you keep what you're happy with then you're ultimately going to sell those goods and if you sell those goods there's going to be a transaction that takes place that you need to record selling stock okay this can apply to both systems You can sell stock using perpetual or you can sell stock using periodic. It doesn't matter. A sale is a sale. Okay, so I have two types of sales though. I can have a cash sale or I can have a credit sale. Okay, so when I'm looking at perpetual or periodic, it makes no difference. You're going to debit the bank or the debtors, asset increase depending on whether it's cash or credit. Okay. You will credit the output VAT, liability increase, okay? Remember, companies have to pay tax over to the government. The government collects taxes through the consumption of goods, okay, buying goods. Right, and then credit the sales, income increase, okay? And that's what you've got. This will be identical for both the perpetual and the periodic system. Okay, copy paste. Right, the only thing that's different is this. Right, when we looked at the previous chapter, we touched on it, now we're looking at it in detail. Okay, so long ago, okay, some of you asked me about inventory. Okay, and inventory is obviously going to be sold, so doesn't it need to decrease? The answer is yes, it does. But you do it here, okay? with the perpetual inventory management system. So you debit the cost of sales, expense, increase, and you credit the inventory, asset, decrease. And this is the new bit that relates specifically to inventory. All right, when inventory is sold, it's a two-part transaction. You record the sale and you record the cost of sale. You have to. Right, does that apply to per periodic? The answer is no. 
no cost of sales because we count stock periodically and then you do a cost of sale or sales calculation right and there's a formula for that okay we'll look at it later on okay but right, maybe just to complete the summary let's put the cost of sale calculation uh, or the formula here okay let's just delete all the extra lines okay cost of sales formula okay we'll practice using it later okay cost of sales is calculated but only for periodic and to calculate it cost of sales is equal to opening stock plus purchases minus purchases returns plus other inventory costs such as carriage on purchases or import duties custom duties that type of thing and then minus closing stock okay and that's the formula for cost of sales right so this is specific but specific to which system this one okay the periodic Right, because you're not keeping track of all your stock all the time. You're only going to be looking at what comes in, what you started with, what you ended with, and then the difference is basically what you've sold. Okay, does that make sense? Perfect.